Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on another video. In today's video, as you can see by the title, I'm going to be talking to you about work as a doctor, but not just work as a doctor, but as a locum doctor. As you may or may not know, a little while ago, about three or four months ago, I switched my work out of training into locum work. What that basically means is that I work ad hoc. So instead of being in a fixed training role as a doctor, as many in the UK are, um, instead I I'm an ad hoc locum doctor, which means that I kind of control my hours. It's almost like a zero hour contract that I have with different health boards, just the one health board at the moment. Um, and I work as a locum senior house officer. Now before I did this, dang, I was terrified. I was so scared. I had so many questions and I feel like I've had so many of those questions answered so I just want to make this video to help any of you who are looking to do an F3 or a locum year or just wondering more about what a career as a locum doctor is like and I hope that I can answer a lot of your questions in this video. If you do like this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, click subscribe for more videos and leave a comment let me know what you think or let me know any questions if there's anything that you feel like I've missed. Without further ado let's get into the video. The first thing that I used to worry about was that I wouldn't get a job. I was like, crap, I'm doing this at quite a junior level. Um, so I'm a post foundation year one, uh, fully GMC registered locum doctor. I was scared, like, what if I don't get a job? What am I gonna do? How am I gonna find a job? People did reassure me saying that it would be fine. But I was still nervous because I think when you're taking a leap like that, it is kind of nerve wracking. So to anyone that's nervous, I would like to confirm that there is no need to be nervous, actually. I simply emailed uh, the directorate, so the health board, local health board that I used to work with, saying, actually, I'll be a locum this year. I'll be free to fill gaps. And um, I'm very blessed to have, I'd say, quite a good relationship with them. I thought that I would have to sign up with different people like Medax, but I haven't done that yet purely because I have been getting the jobs that I wanted within my own local health board and within the hospitals that I'd like to work with. I've even been so blessed to be able to get jobs within the specialties that I'd like to work in, which has been really good because, you know, I'm still a junior doctor and I still want to be learning more and just gathering knowledge and becoming, you know, knowledgeable in a wide range of fields. So I'm really blessed to have been able to get lots of positions that have covered a range of specialties. That said, I would advise that if there are specialties that you haven't done yet, that you always make sure what kind of level they are looking for. For example, there are obs and gynae shifts that I've been asked to work which would just be random locum individual shifts that I've kind of turned down and said no do you know what I would if I'm going to do ops and gynae I want to do it as a fixed position that's for more than a month or so so that I actually I have time to do the day job and I'm not just going in on an on-call rota kind of thing so I think for long-term gaps it's completely awesome and really good to do specialties that are new to you if it's a long-term gap they're actually going to be able to get to know the team and get really the teaching and learning in that environment but if it's just individual 12 hour random shifts. I would recommend just doing the specialties that you're really confident in. So I do a lot of medical on calls and a lot of surgical on calls, but I tend to leave, you know, the neuro on calls and obs and gynae and more specialties that I don't have as much experience working in. I tend to leave those for those who do. So yeah, that was the first thing. You won't be short of a job. I guess the second thing is that specialties aren't as hard to find as you would think, and that there's a lot of need in the NHS as it is very understaffed. Whether that's a good thing or not, I guess it's a good thing for locums because you'll you'll have a job essentially as long as you're good and have good recommendations, which praise God I do. Um, you're pretty much not going to be short of a job. Next, let's talk about money. <laughs> let's talk about money. The annoying thing is that I've definitely learnt over the last few months is that. <laughs> Sometimes you don't get paid. As a locum doctor, you have to kind of give in your own timesheets, do all this faff that one would not expect in 2018. Um, you have to do all this paper-based faff. And sometimes even when you do it, like I've never missed handing in a timesheet. I've never missed a signature. I always do mine correctly. But there are just so many kind of slip throughs that can happen on the admin side and there have been a couple months now where I've not been paid or not been paid as much as I should have been paid. And um, so the dream of, you know, oh, being more financially comfortable is actually quite difficult when it's very inconsistent and you can't kind of rely on your next paycheck actually being there, um, which is super frustrating. But I know that that is a lot better when you go through an agency like Medax. Sorry guys, my camera just died slash got too hot, so I had to switch, excuse me. I believe I was talking about pay. So your pay is more consistent and on time through a locum agency. So if you get your jobs 
through a locum agency, so basically a middleman between you and the health board, then your pay will be consistent and will be on time, they will pay you weekly. However, they also take, I think it's £5 per hour of your pay, so I go straight to the health board, however, sometimes I don't get paid, and to be honest, I would probably recommend the agency, to be completely honest, and um, I just have a good relationship with the um, health board that I'm with at the moment, so I just haven't really rocked the boat, just got to be patient and uh, financial responsible to make sure that you are able to go without a paycheck for a month or two <laughs> which believe it or not like maybe I'm just super financially responsible but that's hard that's kind of kind of difficult when you're not prepared for it another thing to think about when it comes to pay is that your hours are not guaranteed so there have been times when actually there hasn't been any shifts that I could do or any shifts that I was able to do and so I haven't kind of worked for a week or two um, and then I've picked up more shifts so it is a zero hour contract so I, to be honest I would say that it's not kind of the financial haven that some locums make it out to be. So yeah that's the money side of things. The next thing I've learned which I think is a huge thing for a lot of medics I think having worked as a junior doctor I, I've seen burnout a lot. I've seen it in a lot of my peers, a lot of my seniors, a lot of people who are now slightly junior to me. It's, it's a tough job. That toughness continues when you're a locum. So I still stay two hours late on the ward. I still have crazy on calls. I still work in understaffed environments. It's still super stressful. I've still had times when I've gotten home and broken down because we lost a patient. I've still, you're still a doctor at the end of the day and all the stuff that counted when you were in training counts as well when you're a locum. Um, However, I think that because you're able to choose your own hours, uh, it's, it's it, I would say I find it easier to cope with personally. So I know that when I was in training, they would arrange your rota so that you had blocks of on calls. So you'd be doing nights and then long days and then more nights and then a day off. And it's kind of like, whoa, I just worked 14 days in a row. I've done 79 hour weeks before um, of on calls, like busy, crazy on calls where you're just getting into work at 9 a.m., going home at 10.30 p.m. and doing the same thing day after day, day after day. And that can be super exhausting. Um, so I I think that it is more manageable in terms of you get to choose your hours so number one if you sign up for something like that and say you're going to cover a week of on calls then you know you've done it and you can prepare for it and number two I generally um, make sure that my hours are things that I can do so I do still do on calls because I actually kind of love them because they're needed and I want to be a help to my health board and fill a lot of gaps for them um, but also I place those on calls where I know that I can manage them um, so that's a lot better for me. So the work-life balance, I find I'm enjoying my job so so much more as a locum and that is something that I really wish that the powers that be would kind of listen about and, and understand that it's not that junior doctors don't love their job, they do. A lot of us have gone into this career to help people and we love what we do but actually we're being made to do it sometimes in a way that is really just undoable um, in terms of the workload and the hours and the understaffing so I would say that that does improve slightly as a low conductor as long as you're willing to kind of choose your hours wisely and be smart about it and help where you can but not run yourself ragged like they often do when you're on a very fixed training rotor. And another thing that I love about being a locum is that you do actually kind of get to be a really valued member of the team so I found that for a lot of the long-term locum spots that I've done so say when I'm covering a ward or a certain specialty I am kind of the consistent because I'm always there nine to five or nine till seven whereas the other members of the team are being moved around to maybe different hospitals maybe different on calls and whatnot whereas I kind of end up being a consistent and the consultants can kind of recognize that and know that oh Sarah was here for the last however many weeks she remembers this patient she knows how to do this so it I don't know I, you do feel valued as weird as that is I'm really enjoying it and I don't have any regrets I really don't even if things kind of took a turn which by God's grace they won't um I don't think I'd regret it because you kind of have to know and so there's any of you watching this thinking you want to do an F3 or you want to take a year out between F1 and F2 or whatever it is you're thinking of um, I would encourage you to go for it because things often aren't as scary or as devastating as we build them up in our minds to be and you might end up really enjoying it. I recommend that you talk to the head of your foundation school if you want to do a year between F1 and F2. It's not completely normal but it is done quite a lot. <laughs> it's not as abnormal as people might make you think um, and if you want to F3 then you Know, just speak to people who have done it it's a very common thing to do now if you want to go straight into specialty training go for it enjoy it 
uh, yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful in some way. If there's anything that you feel like I've missed, please leave me a comment and I will get back to you. Uh, thank you so much for watching and for being my internet friends. I will see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye.